Hi, it's Mrs. Franklin. How are you today? I hope you're ready to do some art and I hope you've also already watched the video from Mrs. Purananda about Swatch, the girl who loved color. I love that book. It's written by Julia Dinos. The illustrations are really fun and wild. It's a story of a girl and her adventure with color. I have a question for you though. Have you ever painted with a ball? In the first project today, you will get to paint with the ball. In the second project, you're going to paint without even touching the paint. Well, stay tuned and you'll get to see how what I mean by painting without touching the paint in the two projects that I have for you. They are both processed based art and that means that it's more fun to make the art than it is to even look at the art. You're going to have so much fun making these and you're going to make tons of them and you're going to love them. Okay. Get ready, here they come. Okay, here we are with our first super fun project. So I have a box from the recycling bin. It's all empty and I've taped it closed and I've used the scissors and I've cut away half the box. I just put the scissors in and cut around. So now I can use this box more like a tray that has high sides. Other things that you could use is I have a granola bar box that I used earlier. I have a package box that I got in the mail, just folded the sides in and can use this. You could also use a tissue box and cut off the sides. The longer one would probably work out better so that you had a little bit more space for your paper. The next thing you're gonna need is some paint. You want kind of a liquidy paint, like almost a pudding consistency paint. There's washable kids paint that you can use. There's tempera paint, there's finger paint that you can use. Crayola has some little liquidy paints that you can use. Anything that's got a little bit of a pudding consistency to it. You could even use acrylic. Be mindful that acrylic won't come out once it's dry, but that also makes a good candidate to use on another surface if you want to do this project on a piece of canvas or a, anything like that. It's a new way of doing the same project. If you have a bottle that's like a jar like this, then you'll need a stick to scoop out some of the paint to use it. You might want a paper towel to help keep things clean. You need some tape. You're going to need a bouncy ball and you need some paper. Cut some paper so that it'll fit inside your box, leaving a little bit of room around the edges. Makes it a little easier to work with. So what we're gonna do is get started. Let's make some space for our project. First thing we're gonna do is get some tape. I'm gonna make a little circle. I'm gonna put it on the back of my paper. I'm gonna pop this paper inside the box in the middle, pressing it down, leaving space on the sides. So from here, I can put in whatever colors that you want. You can put in one color at a time and then do the project and, and then keep adding colors, or you can put in two or three colors and watch and see how they mix together. We're gonna to start with two colors. I pick two colors that typically get along. I like how they look when they mix together. So that's why I chose these two colors. I wonder how many can remember what it is when you mix red and yellow, what color you make. Hmm. Maybe we'll get to see some of that little color mixing experiment on this too, huh? All right. Now we're ready to get rolling. We're gonna take one of the bouncy balls. I'm choosing the medium ball. I just liked how it looked and um, you can choose whichever one you want. A marble might work. Um, a golf ball might work. Anything that's a little heavier, ping pong ball, probably won't work very well. It might get stuck in the paint. So you can try a few different kinds and see what happens. I like the bigger, medium-sized bouncy ball. So I'm gonna put that in the middle. Now I'm gonna roll it around and let it roll over my paper. Now, if you remember in our story, it's about Swatch who loved to collect color. But when she asked, she found some of the colors wanted to be free and wild. So I want you to experiment with making your colors free and wild and let them roll around. They can roll around fast or they can roll slow. 
Can be yours roll in a line. Maybe they wiggle around. But the fun part is letting your colors have a fun adventure on your paper. You get to see where their path takes them. Sometimes the colors mix together and make a new color, and sometimes they just stay their own color. But however it is, whenever you feel like you're done, you're just going to stop. You can take your ball out and you're going to wash it with soapy water to clean it up and get it ready for the next project. And then you can take out your project by putting your finger in, lifting it up, and just putting it down so it can dry. It's really fun how it looks. Lots of energy. You would take your paper towel and wipe it out put a new piece of paper in, you can do this project over and over and over again using the same box. There's a lot of things that you can do with the product of this paper. Once you're done with it and it's all dry, you can make a lot of things with this. One of the things I did is I did this one earlier and I've made it into a postcard. I put a line here, some lines for the address, and if I add a stamp, I can put this in the mail and I can mail it to somebody. Another thing that I did is I put one on top of a piece of paper and folded it in half and made it into a card that I could give to a friend. And one other one that I did was I cut my paper into squares and I did them all individual colors. So I have a pink, orange, red, and yellow, and then I've taped them to a black piece of construction paper. And you could keep this and hang it on your wall, you could put it in a frame, you could do a lot of things with it. But the idea is that once you've made the paper, you can do a lot of fun things with it. You could cut it into different shapes, anything your kind of imagination could take with it. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this project. There's a lot of ways you can go. And that's pretty much all I can tell you. Go experiment and have some adventure with some paint. Okay, are you ready for our second project now? You don't need much for this project. It's pretty simple actually. You need a piece of paper. I'm using a watercolor paper, a cardstock, or any kind of a heavier paper will work. This one actually happens to be a postcard that you can add an address, a stamp, and a message to a friend and put it in the mail if you want. You need a zipper bag. You need a liquidy kind of paint. I'm using a finger paint here. You could also use a temper paint. You can also use a kid's washable paint. Anything that you could kind of squirt out. You could also have some tools if you want. You can use a piece of cardboard that's bent in half, a popsicle stick, or a Q-tip is my personal favorite for this project. Anything that wouldn't scratch or tear the zipper bag, so nothing sharp. All right, let's get started. First step is we're gonna open up our zipper bag. Get it open, and we're gonna put our paper right inside. We're gonna open up our paint and we're gonna give some color directly inside that bag. We're going to just open it up and we're just going to squirt some right in there. We're going to close this up, put it aside, and we're going to do our second color. You can do whatever colors you want. I picked two colors that are close together. Um, I wanted to see what happens when I mix red and yellow. Um, you can do color mixing experiments with this. You can just see what colors look like when they're together. Yellow is a little bit of a softer color, so I'm going to give it a little bit more than the red. I want it to stand up to the red. The next step is closing your bag. You want to take out some of the extra air and you're going to close your bag. Make sure it's nice and closed. You don't want any paint coming out. Now you can do whatever you want. Get your fingers in there. You can move the paint around. You can squidge the bag. You can use this. This is when some of your tools can come in. You can use that cardboard and push the paint around like this, see what happens. You could use that popsicle stick gently and you can use the Q-tip. Let's get the paint all spread out and then we can explore what it is that Q-tip can do. I like using my fingers, I need to get my fingers in there. Look at all this paint and I'm not getting any on me. So much fun to do this. You can feel the paint through the zipper bag, but it just doesn't get all messy. The finger paint leaves the paint a little more translucent, you can see through it more. It's a fun paint for color mixing too, you can see a lot more. You can squish the bag up. So the kind of fun part about this project is you can do a lot with the Q-tip. You could practice your letter sounds if you wanted, with the ah sound. You could draw a shape 
and then make it into something. You could, look at that, I'm erasing it just by rubbing my fingers over it. You could practice other shapes. Do a rectangle, inside a rectangle, inside a rectangle, inside a rectangle. Okay. Squiggle over the top. In our story, we got to see Swatch go on an adventure with some color. It raced and it ran and it moved all over fast and slow. You could do that with your color. You can do it with your fingers. You could do it with a Q-tip, however you want. This is a lot of fun to do in a lot of different ways. You could keep this process going as long as you wanted. Once you are done though, you want to open up your zipper bag. Let's see. I feel like that almost looks a little like the sun. I need that one. Do, 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 do. Just do some wiggle lines. And maybe those wiggle lines will show up when I'm done. Maybe they're going to go away. Let's find out when I open up my bag. So I'm going to open up my bag. And I carefully grab my piece of paper. Open the bag up a little more, get some air in there. I'm gonna pull out my piece of paper, see what happens. Look at that. You can put another piece of paper inside there and do it all over again. You could get a zipper bag and try different colors. I've got a little paint on me here, so I'm gonna use my paper towel and wipe my fingertips off. I don't wanna get paint on things I don't need. But it's a super fun process project just exploring paint and what it can do without getting too messy and put it off to the side. There's a lot of things you can do with this project. You could use a bigger zipper bag and get a bigger piece of paper in there. Earlier I tried a nine by nine piece of paper in a zipper bag that was a large one, a gallon size, and I was able to do this. I put all three primary colors in here just to see what would happen. I got some purples, some yellows, some browns, some greens kind of fun. You could also tape off a section of your paper before you put it inside the bag and then peel off the tape. In this project, I taped off the letter A and then after I finished the project, I peeled this off. So you could use your initial like I use my initial A for Amanda. That's why it's a capital because it's the beginning of my name. And then you peel the tape off and you're left with this really fun thing. You could put it up on your wall or anything. And this was another one that I had done earlier. And I just played with the colors and mixed them together. I might keep this one and use it as a bookmark later. I'm not sure. What do you think you're going to do with your project? I hope you have fun and I hope you enjoy practicing with color and enjoy the process of letting the color take you on an adventure. Thank you for watching. Bye.